Awata je wore ni bamba Tani o ni bamba Owo agbara le bamba Lo fi ba wa ni bamba Awata je wore ni bamba this is the ancient town of Owo in Owo, local government area of Ondo State, Southwest Nigeria. It is the hometown of the immediate past governor of Ondo State, Arakonrin Oluwarotimi Odunayo Akire Dolu, senior advocate of Nigeria. An outspoken lawyer and a politician, Oluwarotimi was born into the family of late Reverend Ola Akire Dolu of Owo and Lady Evangelist Grace Akiridolu of Igbotu in Eseodo local government area of the Southern Senatorial District of Ondo State. The people of Southwest Nigeria were reflecting on the implications and advantages of the free education policy introduced by late Obafemi Awolowo when baby Oluwaru Timio Odunayo arrived into the family of the Akere Dolus on the 21st of July 1956. Aketi, as he was fondly called by friends and admirers, began his primary education at Government School Owo before proceeding to the famous Aquinas College, Akure, in 1968. He attended Loyola College Ibadan in 1969 to complete his secondary school education and proceeded to Comprehensive High School Ayetoro for his higher school certificate. Akre Dolu gained admission into the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University in 1974 where he obtained his LLB degree in 1977 and later proceeded to the Nigerian Law School in 1978. I first met him in January 1969 when he came over from Aquinas College Akure where he had his air from one he joined us in Luela in class 2 when we were in Luela together from that 1969 to 72 and we both left for comprehensive high school for our HSE uh, program thereafter he went to Ife I went to UI same year we happened to meet at the University of Ife then, now Obafemi Awolowo University. It was one year ahead of me. I was in part one, I was in part two. That was when we got to know you see, ourselves. And uh, the relationship, even though at the time we were in school, was one of uh, you know, student to student relationship. But somehow, we were able to identify, you see, come on to both sides, some uh, uh, qualities and, you see, approaches to issues, which at the end of our course in the university, I would say naturally brought us together to form a partnership. As a leader of the Students' Union Government at IFE, Aketi helped to engineer a leadership focused on issues, robust debates and constructive engagements. He encouraged a genuine mobilization of mass consciousness against inequality, injustice, corruption, arbitrariness and recklessness. No wonder he became a bar activist and served the Nigerian Bar Association in various capacities at both the branch and national levels. Aketi served as the Secretary General of Ibado Branch, Publicity Secretary of Ibado Branch, Vice Chairman Ibado Branch, and later Chairman of the Branch. The late Governor was also Member Legal Aid Council and later as Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Ondo State between 1997 and 1999. Following his various brilliant legal outings, Oluwaro Timi Odunayo Akire Dolu was conferred with the prestigious title of Senior Advocate of Nigeria in 1998. After a meritorious service as President of the Nigerian Bar Association between 2008 and 2010, the overborn fearless and outspoken lawyer ventured into politics. 
Succeed in his bid to become the governor of Ondo State in 2012, Ara Kone Timia Kredolu was elected in 2016 and the journey to government house started. I assure you that uh, at any stage, because of this transition and beyond, it will always be there. Yeah. I can assure you that you have been sent in there and spoken to me on phone. To congratulate me, and I also must note that the candidate of PDP and I have spoken that congratulated me, and I believe that uh, they said we are making history. This will be a transition that is not normal. It will be one between brothers in this state, and I will make sure it, it goes that way and ends that way because all we have done is to serve. All you have done is to serve this state, and all I want to do is to serve this state. With his level of commitment to human and societal development, he was re-elected on February the 25th, 2021 for another term. A devoted Christian with a warm and accommodating spirit, Akredolu was a complete family man. Given the type of politics that we play in our environment, you might want to um, ascribe to all politicians as people who are not sincere they say white when they say black and so on but um, Akete is a professional that found himself in politics there is difference and pursuing everything he does with conscience has not been found wanting. He's fearless, but also respectful. And I see how he relates with the elders. I mean, respecting your elders here is, is, is a way of life. He governed the Sunshine State with passion and commitment, making the people the focal point of his administration. He gave priority to infrastructural development, education, youth development, agriculture, industrial revolution, just as the late governor's commitment to workers' welfare remains a reference point in the country. Road projects carried out include Owo Emurele dualization, Owo Ire dualization, A Division Nepa Ijoka dualization, CBN Bishop's Court dualization, Sabomi Ajagba Road Construction, Okitsukupa Igboko Da Bypass Road, Okiogwa Road Construction, Gaga Community Road Construction, Iwalewa Road Construction, and many others. It was not motorable at all. The Okada, the drivers, and what have you, the, the, it's not possible at all. That is the way I would describe it. But now, our people are very happy because, uh, apart from the fact that uh, it is a uh, road that leads to the hospital that has just begun to us, it's also a load that link a do and no do stay together. So it is a good thing that the governor has done for us. Our uh, joy no no bonds. We are very happy. We are grateful to Governor Kiro Dulu for what he has done for us. And we will continue to remain grateful to him for the job he has done. Uh, right from the creation of a solo government since 1989, it has never happened like this. This road has been abandoned by the past administrations. But now we thank God to our dear governor for him to have given fit considering Ocelo government most especially if one, to remember this road to have given us when we talk of roads not just road but the quality of the roads you can see the quality of the asphalt lays on the road we thank him and we are still expecting i believe we should do more without this road that mother and child hospital there will be nothing to write to me about but now as the road is being constructed there will be easy accessibility both to the to the organization 
other establishments, and even to the major roads. In terms of agriculture, Agreed Olu created new orientation that could make the sector employers of labor as well as wealth creation strategy. Well, the blueprint of agricultural policy is to get a lot of farmstead or get a lot of acres of land allocated to young people who are ready to farm. Uh, and this is to take off many of them from uh, the labor market. So we felt that look, probably the only other way is for you to go into agriculture, you become an agripreneur, or you come, you are trained to be an entrepreneur, and you do some one or two things and employ others to work. And that is why we say, okay, we have what we call youth on the ridges. So we want to, we, we got people, train them, some trained to run a piggery, some trained to farm land, some of them will say, come, come and have land and they plant cassava, because cassava has become the order of the day now. Some are going to plant cocoa. In his quest to change the economy of Ondo State from a civil service oriented one to an industrialized one, he began the process of establishing a deep sea port. Deep sea port is, is everything to the state and is even everything to the country. Because if you have a natural port where you have draft over 60 meters, what else do you need? The country must be interested in Port Ondo. The Port of Ondo is for the country, not only for Ondo State. But the moment the Port of Ondo is established, our dream is that, look, that is all we need. Ondo State will be made forever. Anyway, because goods will come in, activities within the port, mainly will be won by Ondo State indigenous People from north, northern part of the country, central, everybody will have moved down to Ondo, to the south, where we have the port, where you can trade, you can do everything. So vehicles will come, mechanics will do work, parliamentarians will do, other things will come. The industrial revolution of his administration gave birth to the ORE Industrial Hub, which justified the high degree of commitment put into it. The project was inaugurated by former president Muhammadu Buhari. Publishing this industrial complex and hope that God will sustain it and benefit the people of Ondo State and Nigeria in general. Thank you. I am confident through this project, based here, will utilize locally available raw materials to create jobs for young men and the women in this locality. I work in injection machine. Yes, the injection machine will produce uh, the raw material plastic, which they use in rolling, winding the tray. So what we did there, we worked there on target. Rotimi Akridolu was a man who understood what he wanted. He, 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 if it is, it is, um, he always said that it was not profitable for us to go to government without knowing what we wanted. We must be convinced, and he was convinced of everything he wanted. You know, he was convinced. For many of us who, who, who supported him, we, we looked up to him um, from that big Olympian height of somebody who was the best that this, that, that this state among all the people who wanted to be governor could offer for three reasons. One, he was a man who have achieved the peak of his profession, which means he had a lot of points to prove, you know. Number two, he was a man of himself. Everybody knows that Rotimi Akridolu is not a man you can, he's not a yes man to anybody. He was a man of his own conviction. He was a man who understood what you want. He is ready to make mistakes and own up, rather than getting people to say, do this and that. We needed that kind of a person. Then we needed a man who understood development. And we believe that exposure is a key tool for development. So he's gone around the whole world. He's been president of the Nigerian Bar Association, which around the time he was, uh, the bar was like the alternate government of Nigeria. So those three key things were important to many of us who worked closely with him, who followed his lead, who got inspired by his aspiration. And then we, we, we got convinced that this, after all, is the man 
who, if we all support, work with, listen to him, and get encouragement from him, can help to turn the fortunes of, of Fondo State. So, and I think we are proud. Another major intervention of late Arakone is the establishment of Amotekun Corps, which was described as a child of necessity when the peace of the Southwest was being threatened. It was eventually keyed into by the entire Southwest states. We started with regular patrols in all the local government headquarters. Then we now rode down to the troubled area, which is uh, the boundaries of the state with Kogi, Edo, and the River Rhine area. And as we talk today now, we've been able to stem it down considerably too. After we had this uh, security summit, we empowered the dawn to sit down and walk. And the governors met and said, we'll use Amotekun. Amotekun was a, a different species of cat. Probably the only one that is fast on land, inside water, I can fly up, I can do anything. So what we need really is that we want our people to be protected, both on land, on sea, and everywhere. And if they are on the tree, they can jump down. So Amotekun is a green name that we should have, and we have it. Circumstance in which we have found ourselves, state governments have no choice but to set up state security apparatuses to protect the life and property of everybody. Akiti was a, uh, an activist. In his own way, he's a radical in his own way, you know, and um, he brought that uh, activism into uh, national politics and national discourse. He took very firm uh, positions on national issues, um, and uh, for instance, when uh, there were these serious security challenges, he led the way to uh, promote. Um, state involvement in security issues and this is clearly uh, evident, evident from the establishment of the um, uh, what do you call it the, the Amotekun which is a model uh, for, for uh, um, the second tier of national security uh, at state level and regional level and then um, you know we play the key leadership role in the establishment of Amotekun across uh, southwest and um, and I think uh, many states in Nigeria are using that as a template. Um, and but but for me, even though I'm a techno, may not as be uh, uh, the end of it. It's just the beginning. But but he laid the foundation. So an issue of security was very serious. In the other issues of national importance, he took very firm positions. And um, and that is hallmark of um, of a statesman where there are issues everybody must show where they stand I, there was never any doubt as to where i could understood a worker friendly governor who prioritized their welfare by ensuring payment of inherited outstanding salaries while promotion was carried out as and when due he was indeed a leader a leader that led by example he would do the things for you to see the way he wanted it done 
he was fearless. He believed in social, just, uh, social justice. He believed in fairness, equity, and good conscience. And he did everything to fight for the downtrodden. So many testimonies have come since he died. Some people who thought the law wanted to punish them, and he will call. And is that the case? Or he will go to court and defend some people who had no money to fight for justice. Akiti was so fearless that he would speak the truth to power. I never cared who source was God. He was such a gift to Nigeria. He was consistently consistent. He was simply exceptional. At a time, I, I went to him, discussed some things with him, and I would discover that the first question Mr. Governor will ask me is that, Head of Service, have you discussed with the Labour? Have they agreed to this? Once I say, sir, we have, uh, we, I discussed with the Labour, we met, and they have agreed to it, he doesn't blink the eye. He takes his pen and he says, go ahead. So whatever we have seen in Undo State today, in fact, it's a, it's a pointer to the fact that he had the mind of you know, focusing on the welfare of workers. There was no doubt about the fact that he was really passionate about ensuring that the workers have their fair share of what good governance is all about. At the party level, he has high regard for party structures. He has regard for the that explains why he gave us not just give not just give us two plots of land, but today on those state can boast of one of the the most inviting, the most alluring, the most beautiful state secretariat across the country. We are not renting. We have our own place, very beautiful, courtesy of the late uh, governor. Of course, he was a builder of men. Yours truly, I'm a living example. It was Kosi of Akiri Dolu. So that was his kind of person. At the end of the day, he did his best to understand. Is it the best for Yoruba South Southwest, and of course, Nigeria at large? We will remember him for all this and many more. I am proud of him, even in death. I am proud of him when he was sick. I've always been very emotional about a man I loved. And I love him with all my heart because one of the most difficult people to find in this country are men of conviction. Um, many people in this country live secret lives and they live double lives. And one of the things that is antithetical to correct leadership is people having different faces to themselves. But he was a man who should so short straight. He was a man whose yes was his yes. He was a man who meant every word he said and said only what he meant. And um, he was a man who was not afraid to make mistakes. And many of us did make mistakes in our lives. And he was a man who I try all my life since I met him to imbibe that into my attitude also. He was a man who was um, a slave to loyalty. When he says he's your friend, it doesn't matter if the heavens are coming down. It's going to stick with you. And he's talked with many of his friends. And I am privileged to have benefited from such benevolence, such loyalty of friendship. Akri Dolu's sense of humor was second to none. Having been a member of the Kegites Club, the former governor was also a fellow Nikola Kuti enthusiast. <laughs> DJ Oya Water in August enemy
was the Chancellor of the Owo Anglican Diocese, Grand Patron of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, and Sports Writers Association of Nigeria in Ondo State. Arakuni Oluwarotimi Odunayo Akredolu was married to Betty Anyangu Akredolu and blessed with four children and many grandchildren. He bid the world farewell on December the 27th, 2023, during protracted illness. Great man of courage, very bold, and he is always, when he's here with us now, pursue his conviction with so much courage irrespective of whose ox is gone. We cannot forget him because the legacies he has laid down in Ondo State they are out there for all to see. No fi ba wa ni ba ba, a wa ta je wo re ni ba ba, ta ni wo ni ba ba, a wo a ba ra ni ba ba, no fi ba wa ni ba. You had to leave us this soon. Oh, we are pain. Leave us this soon. Oh, don't you want it? 